Hello, back again. Because my hive of TCs has done extremely well over winter, I've actually just weighed the hive last week and it's increased in weight by, uh, by a kilogram and there's a lot of activity in there. On warm days there's uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of uh, cocoon castings being brought out and, and dumped. You might uh, have seen a, an existing video on that which I made a few weeks ago and posted up here. I've decided to, uh, to split my hive this summer and I've just purchased this book here Australian Stingless Bees A Guide to Sugar Bag Beekeeping by John Clump I'm sure if you're interested in it it's got some wealth of uh, information on it and within it there's a chapter called Splitting by Eduction which involves placing another hive in front of your existing hive and joining the two together forcing uh, the bees to go in and out of a, a new empty box and uh, with the hope that they will uh, they will set up home in there with a new queen so I've decided I'm going to do that and uh, I've started the project already but I thought at this point I would uh, start and document it just in case someone else would like to uh, to follow the uh, follow the journey and perhaps uh, be in a similar situation and and do the same thing so uh, that's what this video is about so let's get on with it I'll show you where I'm up to and um, we'll take it from there because I live in an area that's so cold I've decided to not simply place a normal hive out in front but I've started building a box to put my normal hive in it and in that box I have, I'm going to put some insulation to uh, to protect it so what I did the first thing I did was to go up to uh, my local friendly IGA store and get a couple of polystyrene uh, boxes that they use for their broccoli and things like that so that's the cost of material absolute zero it cost me a little bit for the uh, for the timber but the box that I've made I will show you now all I've done is to to make a box and I'm, I'm gluing the polystyrene on the inside it will be a, a reasonably snug fit sideways for the hive but uh, which I'll show you in a second well there's the there's the lid of the hive so you can see it will be a nice snug fit there but plenty of room in the back because I plan to put a feeder in the back of the hive and I also plan to put a heater in the back of this particular hive here. I've made a lid, a larger than life lid. Again, I've put polystyrene in that and that will simply lock down, clamp down on top of that like so. So that will be, uh, that will be my hive. And the back of this will connect into my existing hive on a, on a stand. So. To hold the polystyrene in the box, all I do is just use a bit of construction adhesive. That's all it takes. Simple as that. The hive I'm using is a standard oath hive, except I've cut the landing board off because I want that to be flush up against the inside of the polystyrene. The other change that I've made, which John suggested, is that I have put the exit at a different level to force the uh, the bees to come in and actually look around within his, this box here uh, so they don't just walk in and go straight through on the same level so I've used a, a, a standard 13 mil garden fitting the inlet of my main hive is, has a, a tube of um, 19 mil electrical conduit like that to connect it to the outside world and the, uh, the 13 mil garden hose fits perfectly within that so that will enable me to couple this up onto that there. I did mention that I was going to put a feeder on. I, this is the uh, design of the feeder that I will be using and likewise that has the same fitting so that just fits straight on there like that. One other enhancement, I guess enhancement's the word that I've made is that um, I have rebated the top section there and I will get a piece of perspex that fits in there under the lid so that will still be dark but then that will give me uh, a viewing window so I can check and see what is actually going on. 
that's what I've done so far. I will carry on and I'll show you the next step when I get round to uh, completing it. Well there's the box with the polystyrene inside it. Doesn't have to be anything overly flash as long as it's a nice firm fitting. What I have done for the for the box itself though is I did use a good quality polyurethane glue because that does work better outside like the standard PVA woodwork glue or the builder's adhesive. The polyurethane glue expands like a foam and fills up any gaps but I found that uh, if you spray one side of what you're gluing with a, a mist of water just from a little water bottle uh, it expands even more and you get a really great seal and then once it's cured you can just sand it back for a nice even finish. Then um, and I have uh, screwed it together with galvanized screws and filled all those holes so once the filling dries which it hasn't yet I will sand that down and give it uh, two or three coats of paint to uh, to make sure that we do have a nice weatherproof seal. I'm about to construct the heater now and there is a video up on YouTube about building a heater from junk parts using an old computer power supply. I'm going to put one of those in here but I've since made some changes or I've, I've had an idea which I'm going to try so in, you can see the, the leaflet or you can check the video that I've already put up there but instead of going for this ornate structure with inside the tube all I'm going to do is get a tube and drill a few small holes and just thread the wire through and the reason I'm doing that is because I've been monitoring the one that I have made and the the wire doesn't even get hot to touch so uh, I'm going to try that and it should be a lot faster a lot simpler so I'll put that together now and we'll see how it works well my original heater that I made using scrap parts and a PC power supply I actually made some plastic blocks, drilled holes in them and screwed them to the inside of the 90mm uh, downpipe conduit. What I've done now, which I think is a lot easier, is just to drill some holes up and down uh, this, each side and I've threaded my wire, or I'm threading my wire through and um, it's, look, it's taken me 20 minutes to do this, that's to make the brackets on the on the bottom of the fan, bolt it, drill all the holes, pop rivet it together. So this will be finished in another five minutes, so in less than half an hour we've got a, a heater. Well I've finished the heater, I've popped it in the box and as you can see the room temperature here currently is 13.9 so it's a reasonably cool day. So if I switch this over to measure inside the box you can see it's 22.7 now I've had the heater running in the box for a good hour and a half, two hours now because I wanted to see the maximum temperature that it will get to make sure that if the thermostat fails I'm not going to have another meltdown and that's about the maximum output with an outside temperature of um, 13 odd, not that it should make that much difference with the insulation that's in there but that looks like it's the the uh, the maximum it's uh, it's capable of getting. It's sort of fluctuating between 22.7, 22.9 so uh, I'm happy with that. Um, I'll show you the heater very quickly. There's a couple of things that I want to mention. I've set this up to uh, to be running 8 watts. Uh, it draws probably oh, about 0.5, half an amp. But um, So any little supply will do. But one thing to note, I'm going to power this with a, a, a very big garden type transformer. The output is 12 volts AC at 400 watts. And this one here, as I said, is pulling about 8 watts. So I'll be able to, in the future, if I want to, connect up quite a number of heaters and hives to this particular transformer. But one thing to note is that the output is AC. So to run this fan, I will have to install just a, a very small bridge rectifier. Um, so the, the AC will be converted to, to DC. Instead of being, my testing was done on a power supply which I have here which is actually 13.8 volts so if this is 12 volts out I'll be getting just over 11 volts when I couple this up so theoretically my heater should have a maximum output around just over 20 degrees so that suits me fine. I have visited my friend Mr eBay and uh, for a very very reasonable price 
I have picked up this little uh, this little thermostat so uh, I can just dial this up to a temperature and um, I'll sit that in the box as well it has a, I can sit it in the box or outside the box it doesn't matter the, these will run AC or DC at any voltage it'll run 240 volts but I won't be doing that I'll be just running it on the 12 volt side so I can just set this up and um, control the uh, the temperature from within the box and I think this little device here set me back around about $15 so uh, all in all it hasn't cost me very much at all to get this uh, project up and running well that's it for this point in time what I'll do now is I'll put everything together I'll put the hive in the box I'll fit the heater in the box and fit the thermostat in the box and I'll show you the finished project the project is all but finished I have the heater mounted in the box I have the thermostat mounted in the box, I have the bridge rectifier mounted in the box and the hive is sitting in there. As you can see I have made a slight change, I did cut some of the foam out around the hive to allow a little bit of uh, room for circulation. There's about at least, at least a centimetre around, all the way around it now and uh, I figured that it would probably be best to do that. On the front of the hive I have mounted an LED seal behind uh, some white perspex just to check so I can tell from the outside whether or not the heater is on. I need to monitor that. I may have to adjust the length of the wire. I'm not too sure because I've not done this before. I have welded up a plate. As a welder I make a very good train driver. I'm going to mount that on the bottom and that will sit on top of a star picket post so that's how it will be mounted and last but not least I didn't have to do this but I got a little bit carried away well yesterday like today was a cold wet and miserable day and you can probably hear the rain on the roof so uh, I decided that I'd have a play around with the box instead of putting it outside and uh, yeah all right I was bored I know but this is the result. You can see the LEDs on, so I've actually got it inside just to giving it a final test before I put it outside. That blob of grey matter on the bottom of the fake door is a, a ball of blue tack which is holding a thermometer in place. I'm actually checking the temperature inside the hive as well as outside. So it has, uh, I have now finished it, and um, this is the final result. You will see it better once it's outside, but I c couldn't resist. Uh, putting it on video. Well I have the heater wired up outside now and as you can see it's pulling about 0.7 amps. When the thermostat reaches the temperature the, uh, the you can see the current drop off. Well there's a finished masterpiece in all its radiant glory sitting connected to the front of the internal hive just waiting for the uh, for the girls to discover the new path to the outside world. I realised there were gaps between the capping and the corrugated iron big enough for bees and other insects to get inside and actually populate the area inside the roof so what I decided to do was totally seal that up by filling it up with foam so I drilled two holes in the bottom of the roof which you can see here and uh, just with a can of foam just filled that up and that completely filled the cavity with foam uh, it sealed the capping at the top it sealed the holes underneath where the bottom of the corrugated iron met the uh, the timber and it will also provide a great deal better insulation so uh, I should have done it at the start but I didn't actually think of it you'll notice now that where there were gaps underneath the roof and the capping on the top it has now been filled up by the foam and I thought if I'm going to this much trouble I've got a heater inside and you can't have a heater without a chimney and if you're going to have a chimney you're going to have to have something to create heat so I've got some firewood and I've replaced the uh, LED indicator where that was there is now a thermostat so I can monitor the temperature inside the container and I've replaced the LED with a little light. Isn't that nice? It's over the top I know but hey it looks good in the garden.
And while I had the lid off, I had a quick peek inside and there's a bit of activity in there. So it uh, looks like the girls might actually be starting to do some work in there. So fingers are crossed.